this series of videos I'm attempting to repair and restore this HP 9845B vintage computer. So far in this series I've dismantled the unit down to the bare chassis and I went through the power supply, rebuilt that, carried out a few repairs and then I went through the board and did the usual static testing just using the multimeter looking for shorts just so that I could plug them together and hopefully not damage anything. I got to the point where I could plug the boards in, uh, the two pairs of boards for the two processors. This machine, if you're not familiar with it, has two uh, separate processors, the LPU and the PPU. And I got those plugged in, but the machine just will not boot up. It um, doesn't really do anything, doesn't beep, doesn't get as far as the cell test. So I attached the logic analyzer and in the previous video I had the analyzer attached to the LPU processor as a test connector along the top of the processor board and the boot up sequence on this is fairly strange in that the two processors have to try and figure out which one's which so they look at the halt line that's going into the processor. That's not used as a halt line in the machine, it's just the halt input to the CPU hybrid device. This machine uses two hybrid uh, CPU devices, it's uh, essentially a collection of um, custom chips on a substrate. And um, what they do is they look at the, um, uh, the halt line and on the LPU that line on the um, processor board is grounded and on the PPU it's connected to the vertical drive signal from the monitor. And I don't have the monitor fitted but I did uh, cobble together a simple circuit to provide the missing signal. Um, but it still won't boot up and what we saw in the previous video was that the LPU is actually going through the correct process at startup. Um, it's identifying itself as the LPU and it's branching to the correct um, code so it's trying to run its own code in its own uh, RAM and ROM card and that's quite a, the reason I start with the LPU is because it's using block 3 code but it starts off by reading block 5 code it's in the PPU RAM and ROM card they're on separate buses one's on the X bus one's on the Y bus so to get through to the proper startup code in block 3 a lot has to work including fundamentally the two buses doesn't mean it's working properly there might be some stuck bits or other issues um, but it's a good sign that a lot of the um, LPU subsystem is working and that seemed to work we got through to the correct code um, once I'd uh, got off camera I did the same thing with the PPU I attached the logic analyzer to the PPU there's an identical test connector all the pins are in the same order, you can just unplug the logic analyzer from the LPU, plug it onto the PPU and we should get a similar type of uh, action except that the PPU should branch, it should identify itself as the PPU and it should branch to the um, block 5 code which is the code at the beginning of its own uh, RAM and ROM card. However what I found was that it's doing exactly the same thing as the LPU I mean it's doing exactly the same thing, it's branching to the block 3 code. So it thinks it's the LPU, so effectively both processors at startup think they're the LPU. And that's why it's um, not getting very far through the startup. So the PPU, once it's identified itself as such, should jump through to the monitor program that's in its own ROM card. But it's not jumping there, it's jumping through to the block 3 code um, thinking it's the LPU. So at first I suspected my uh, cobbled together circuit might not be working um, so I checked that and the signal was fine compared it to the actual monitor and it's pretty much identical certainly well within uh, the limitations the system would need to start up. So I then started suspecting the interface board this tall riser board that connects the monitor to the motherboard and I trace the signal through there, it goes through several uh, gates, so I suspected one wasn't working. And the signal should come out of this board as the POC or the not POC signal. But it was making it through and it was appearing on the motherboard correctly with the correct signal. It also requires the CRT 
uh, line to be low to enable that but it was all working I was getting the correct signal out so my attention then of course shifted to the processor board now, unfortunately there's not much on the processor board that relates to that you want me to see it but the line the PLC line comes in and it goes directly to the processor halt pin so I started um, suspecting that maybe this um, machine had been messed with and the processor module changed for a different version. Some versions of these processors don't have the whole pin connected internally. Um, but uh, I was assured that this machine ran um, before it was put into storage and then nothing's been done to it. So I can't see that being the case. It must have the correct processors in. So I then um, figured that, well, perhaps it's just a faulty processor um, hybrid module and the halt line just isn't working. So what I did um, on the basis that, well, if it's always identifying itself as the LPU, it doesn't matter if that module's in the LPU card. So I swapped the two hybrid modules over. I took the one off the LPU, put it into the PPU and put the one from the PPU into the LPU. And then if it always identifies itself as the LPU, it doesn't matter because it is actually the LPU. But it made no difference whatsoever. I'm still getting exactly the same thing. The PPU is um, booting up and identifying itself as the LPU. So it's getting a bit confusing. I trace the signal through, buzzed it through, and it is indeed connected um, from the output of the interface card. The connection does successfully make it all the way through to the pin on the processor card. So I started trying to figure out what might be going on and you can probably tell from what's on the bench here. Um, this is the hybrid module we're talking about and I've mentioned previously this didn't seem to be properly fitted into the heatsink the first time I took it out. I have swapped them back by the way. And um, I also said that when I took this out and fitted it properly I'd replace the heatsink compound. And what I've noticed when I've taken it out this time, if we look at this heatsink compound, you can kind of see where the hybrid module is making contact. But further down, you can see it's not touching at all. So the hybrid module is not touching. I'll just grab the, um, the CPU card and explain why that's uh, possibly a problem. As I said, with this card fitted, I can put a scope on the um, halt pin, the, or the halt connection, and I'm getting the correct signal that's been generated from our startup fixture. So I know the signal's getting to this connector, but looking at this under a microscope, these, these are the kind of zebra strips I mentioned in a previous video, and it's a plastic tube with gold rings around it. And the idea is it transfers the electrical connection from the gold contacts on the board through to the contacts on the hybrid module. But if this is not being pressed against these, then we won't get proper connection. And the only way it's pressed on is from the heatsink. And if this heatsink isn't pressing onto the module as it should do, then we're not going to get connections between the board and the module. And the fact that this heatsink compound, which actually comes up quite a long way, it's obviously when I put it on here, I didn't spread it on particularly thin, so it's you know, probably half a millimetre high. Um, it's not touching the hybrid module at all. And you can see, or you possibly see on the back of the hybrid module, there's no sign that it ever touched. The writing, by the way, are the sign-off checks from the HP engineers. Quite interesting. It's uh, nice to, to see this. It's uh, quite a historic uh, part of the machine. Um, so I've got a feeling that maybe this isn't actually making proper contact with the zebra strips which are also compressed over time, uh, over time heating and cooling and constantly being compressed. Um, chances are the plastic's hardened up and uh, shrunk and maybe it's just not touching. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to measure this really carefully all the way around, make sure it's even and then I'm going to take about 0.1 millimetre off this outer lip and that will cause the hybrid module to be pushed a little bit more firmly onto these zebra strips and then hopefully they'll make contact. Before taking this across to the workshop I decided to just measure this to see uh, what the 
uh, the, the height of this loop was, so I knew exactly how much I'd taken off. Uh, and what I found, if I measure the lip at the top, this is the top edge, um, I'm getting a, uh, a height of 1.5 millimeters. But if I measure it at the bottom, I'm getting something nearer to 1.8 millimeters. So there's a significant difference between the height of the lip, and this is what determines how hard the um, hybrid module is being pressed against the zebra strips. So that's quite a big difference between one end and the other, and that could explain why it's only touching at one end. And the high end, this has got a corner uh, cut off, so you know which way around it goes, and the high end is the one that's not touching, so uh, that may well explain uh, what's causing this problem. So I'll go and reduce this a bit, even it out so it's the same height both ends. It's 1.5 at the low end, what I'm going to do is take it down to 1.4 all the way around and uh, put it back on and see if we get any further. Okay, well I've taken anything between 0.1 and 0.15 millimeters off depending on where it was, so it's now even all the way around. It's also flat and I did that with emery cloth on a piece of glass plate and so now this in theory should put a bit more pressure onto the hybrid module and push it slightly harder onto the zebra strips and evenly all the way around. So I put some fresh heat sink compound on here, refit this to the board, try it in the machine and see what happens. What I've shown so far in this video was shot quite some time ago when I first started working on this machine and when I initially powered this up it was pretty much completely dead. I wasn't getting any, any activity on these boards at all. This is the PPU card and I initially suspected that the uh, hybrid modules were faulty. They weren't behaving the way they should. There was a clock going into them and there were two clocks coming out as there should be. But most of the other signals didn't look right or just weren't present at all. So it wasn't outputting certain signals that it should have done. And uh, so I started by taking the uh, hybrid module heatsink off so I could have a look, see if it was cracked. Found a lot of dirty connections around the edge of the hybrid module, which I did show in the video. Um, but I decided to show the repair I carried out to these modules in a separate video. And that's why this video is now being shown. Um, but the footage was originally going to be in a in a, another video, so um, excuse the, um, the discontinuity in this particular video. Um, but uh, what I found was that the, there were indeed dirty edge connections. When I cleaned them up, it did improve things. Some of the signals came back, but this was still effectively dead. And what I started doing was buzzing out the connections between the edge connector and the actual hybrid module, a lot of the connections go directly from the edge connector to the module. So I was buzzing this through and I was going from the edge connector to these through hole um, connections on the back. On the other side of the board underneath the hybrid module are some pads that the zebra strips sit on and transfer the signals through to the hybrid. But what I noticed was that even though all the nuts were tight I could move the module around, it would kind of slide easily side to side, so just very gentle pressure and it would move around and if I tipped the board from one way to another, the module would drop from one end to the other, so it obviously wasn't being held in place. So that's why I made the changes that I did. Now following the changes, I buzzed out the connections again, so for example the halt line was previously reading as open circuit, so no continuity whatsoever between it and either ground or V+. Plus. Uh, once I'd reduced the thickness of the heatsink, the module stopped moving around. And all. So if I buzz between the edge connections and ground and V+, plus for all these connections, I'm now seeing something, whereas before about 10 of them were just completely open circuit. And um, once I'd done that, I plugged the card back in. Machine still wouldn't boot, there were quite a few other problems but at least now I was seeing the correct signals coming out of the hybrid module and the board started coming to life. It actually started trying to read the ROM. So I'm pretty sure that um, what had happened is the, the zebra strips had just uh, shrunk over time. The um, 
the actual heatsink wasn't machined particularly accurately, but I'm assuming that didn't really matter when the strips were quite flexible. But as they've shrunk and hardened up, then a, a certain part of it, so about the top third, very few of the connections were making it through to the hybrid, if any. Some still read very high in the sort of tens of mega ohms, but they were reading completely open. Uh, but as I say, it now seems to be working, and this footage, the, you know, the footage you've seen so far at the beginning of this video, was shot probably two weeks ago now, and I've done a lot of work on the machine, and both of the hybrid modules seem to be behaving themselves. I did something similar to the LPU heatsink as well. I didn't take quite as much off, but it was showing signs of not making good contact. I bolted the PPU on with fresh heatsink compound, took it off, and it was clear that all the compound was touching, it was all kind of squidged out all the way up, and so that seemed to cure the problem. Now, I'm not suggesting you do this as a matter of course, I only did this because it was clear that the hybrid wasn't making good contact, and I would suggest you only start investigating this if you really feel there's a need to, uh, but in general, uh, if the hybrid is moving then it's a sign it's not being properly held. It won't move very far because it is captive in some little tabs on the heatsink, um, but it will move about half a millimetre if it's not being held firmly, so it shouldn't move at all. If it's moving about freely, just put your finger on it and if it moves side to side even a little bit it's a sign that it's loose. And uh, the other thing is don't go too far, it's a very thin substrate, it would be extremely easy to break it if you go too far. So I only took a small fraction of a millimetre off, made sure it was even all the way up and down, and when I bolted it back on, I just rested it on, and you don't really want a big gap along the edge, if you've got a one millimetre gap, um, don't try and bolt it up, you will break the hybrid. So um, that uh, in this case seemed to do the trick. It brought the board back to the point where it was starting to try and read the ROMs and um, hopefully at some point I'll get this machine resurrected but I don't believe it would ever have worked properly without modifying these heatsinks.